Does anyone else find it odd that they don't teach about the world's first human civilization in school? The creators of so many things that we utilize all the time in our daily lives more than 6,000 years later, including, well, the modern calendar. That's right, the calendar based off of the lunar cycles originates from the Sumerians. Most people are not aware of this. In fact, when I say that they're the creators of things we utilize all the time in our daily lives, well, I'm including time itself. The 60-12 base counting system that's used for measuring hours, minutes, and seconds, which is also utilized in basic mathematics and geometry for measuring degrees and angles, minutes, and seconds. In fact, the Sumerians are the creators of the very first writing system altogether, also referred to as cuneiform, which was an advanced system that even utilized pictographs, just as we use today, symbols to represent entire sentences. In this video, I'm going to share with you many things that the Sumerians created. In fact, even stories that originate from the most common religions on Earth go right back to the Sumerians, and most people have no idea. But for some reason, they're not even required testing or even learning by the Department of Education. In fact, if you go to any history textbook through high school, you'll find only one to three sentences total about the Sumerians, which are usually included in other paragraphs on other topics, such as the fact that they are the creators of the wheel. But it's the things that they somehow knew about that we can't explain that are total mysteries that I'll also discuss in this video. But if you're not familiar with the ancient Sumerians, they come from the cradle of civilization, Mesopotamia, the Fertile Crescent itself. And we weren't even aware of the Sumerians altogether until more than 150 years ago upon the discovery of a massive cache of clay and stone tablets in modern day Iraq. And real quick, you can see here, they utilized cylinder seals to create these tablets. But at the ancient library of Ashurbanipal in modern day Mosul, Iraq, they found more than 30,000 of these tablets, many of which were broken. And this is also the same location where they found these infamous wing bulls. Some refer to them as the Anunnaki, or the sky gods, and there's so much speculation and debate about these. But this just happens to be the same site that I was at by some incredible synchronicity during my deployment to Iraq in 2009 and 2010. And by the way, I still need to make a video about my Iraq experience. A lot of people have asked for that and explain how I went from brainwashed sheeple who bought the lies to thinking for myself and my journey to awakening as I call it. And I have a lot to say about it because that war was a massive scam, a money generating fraud scam and an incredible crime against humanity. So look forward to that video in the future. But in these clay tablets, we've learned so many different things that they had created not just glass or the wheel, as I mentioned earlier, but even the sailboat. They even set the platform for modern agriculture through the invention of the plow and even the seed sowing machine. In fact, the Sumerians created the first sewer systems, canals, and irrigation systems. And they even mapped it out here. This is a plaque showing advanced sewer systems and water channels for agriculture. And speaking of maps, they created those all together, and they utilized them to create advanced trade routes. And they did this more than 3,000 years prior to the Silk Road, the infamous Silk Road, which of course they do teach in school. And they traveled more than 3,000 kilometers, or nearly 1,900 miles, all the way over to Pakistan. And with these trade systems, it created an explosion of culture. The Sumerians themselves are the very first to utilize jewelry, makeup, and get this, even beer. These stone and clay tablets annotate more than 500 different recipes for beer. That's right, craft beer comes from the Sumerians. Another interesting fact is that they created instruments. This stone tablet describes 23 different instruments, which include various types of flutes, drums, tambourines, and even the harp. You could even jokingly argue that they are the creators of entertainment itself. I mean, look at this, these tablets here. They are the first known conductors of wrestling or mixed martial arts altogether, at least that's been annotated. So what do they do with all this? The music, the booze, the makeup, the jewelry, the beer? <laughs> well, look at this tablet right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, you get what's going on there. And that's, what, almost 4,000 years ago. Drinking beer and engaging in other forms of entertainment altogether. <laughs> now, like I mentioned earlier, the Sumerians created the first writing system as well as the first schools. And privileged individuals went there and learned how to scribe themselves and they just jumped right into it. In fact, they're the creators of the very first contract altogether. How hilarious is that? They didn't miss a beat with their trading systems. And let me guess what this says, pay up or else. But where this gets really interesting is that in these stone and clay tablets, they give credit to all their knowledge, not to any king or inventor, but they say that all the knowledge was given to them by other beings, the Anunnaki, which means 
from heaven to earth came. And many people, when they look at these various tablets, they speculate that this is where the ancient astronaut hypothesis came from. And maybe you're familiar with Zachariah Sitchin. Now this is a subject I have to make a video on altogether about the Anunnaki, my thoughts on Zachariah Sitchin and everything. I, I've looked into this quite a bit. I know that there's a lot of speculation out there and I don't agree with everything that people have stated about these ancient astronaut hypothesis. I mean, you don't see me t saying that the aliens created the pyramids. But it is interesting that they give credit to others for everything they have, all the knowledge. Now, people think that that's, of course, symbolism for something else. Angels, you know, the gods. So let's discuss what the Sumerians said they knew about that was later determined to be correct. Take the story of the Great Flood. You may be familiar with that from more than 500 different civilizations across five continents around the world. That science, the most recent data proves, actually did happen. Core ice samples taken from Greenland and Antarctica, and I've discussed this in other videos, they illustrate that at the height of the last ice age, the Earth's sea levels were 425 feet lower than today, and over a few thousand years, it slowly rose, but there's these huge spikes that happened that confirmed that there were sudden, rapid, and essentially incredible increases in the global sea levels. So in other words, the Sumerians were right. The flood did happen. And it's interesting that mainstream academics and scientists still refer to it as a myth. But what's even more interesting than the denial is the fact that the Sumerians knew about this 6,000 years after the fact is when they were writing this stuff down on the tablet. So it really makes you think. Now look at this tablet here. This is the one, this is very notable, the infamous solar system tablet. I mean, just look at this for yourself. What do you see there? I mean, how could they possibly have known about planets rotating around the sun 6,000 years ago? I mean, isn't that more than 5,000 years before Copernicus identified that planets rotated around the sun? in just the same period of time before even the first telescope was invented. Wouldn't you need a telescope to know that there was planets out there? And not to mention, didn't everyone think that the Earth was flat back then? How did they know this stuff? And so just to clarify, mainstream, they will say that no, none of these are planets. All of these are stars. And there's even a website devoted to debunking Zachariah Sitchin, which is called, get this, SitchinIsWrong.com. And I took a look at this. And the point that this guy had was that Sitchin didn't even read the cuneiform on the tablet itself. And he describes that he illustrates what it stated in his PDF. So I clicked on that. And 14 pages basically discuss the fact that since this tablet doesn't say anything about stars or planets, then yeah, it's just wrong altogether. I mean, God, just look at this and think for yourself. I mean, what do you, what is that? And this creates all kinds of other speculation because it's like, wait, is there, are there 11 planets? And so, okay, is Pluto a planet? Like, give me a break. What a stupid discussion that is. Some scientists that want to redefine things. Who cares how far away it is or how small it is? Like, grow up. But this raises other questions too about the asteroid belt. I've discussed this in other videos. It's clearly that was a planet or a massive moon or something. Something collided. Scientists will say it happened millions of years ago, but they clearly don't have enough variables to make that conclusion. I mean, you need to know the size of these objects. You need to know the direction as well as speed of the collision. So they can't say how long ago that was. But when you look at these tablets, is it possible that this could be communicating the so-called ninth planet that they know exists? All the data proves that this ninth, this massive ninth planet, four or five times the mass of Earth itself, was creating a tilt in Neptune and Uranus, and that's how they discovered it. Well, they haven't discovered it. They're looking for it. It's obviously incredibly far away, and, and my guess is that it probably has a completely different orbit altogether, but they know it's out there. And yet, here's this tablet from 6,000 years ago that shows these things. And by the way, Zachariah Sitchin is the one that was saying that there was another planet out there, and here it was ver validated 40 years later. That's interesting. But these tablets contain other information as well. Take a look at these tablets, and there are others that show seven stars, seven planets, seven something, seven dots. And many will say that this is just probably indicative of the Pleiades star system, seven stars. But, I mean, why isn't it in the shape of it? And what's interesting is that people that identify with the ancient astronaut hypothesis is that, look, if you were coming, if you were coming from someplace else, beings from another planet visiting our solar system, you would need to pass by seven planets to get to Earth. It's an interesting theory. And by the way, look at this tablet that shows one of those winged bulls. Here's something else also worth thinking about, is that there's suggestive evidence that the Sumerians somehow knew about the great year cycle, the Earth's tilt and precession, 25,920 year cycle. And when you consider their awareness of the zodiac and a few other factors with their counting system, you can make an argument that they somehow knew about this cycle. And I mean, thousands of years before the Mayans figured that out. And that's a mystery in of itself too, because we're talking one degree every 72 years. And back then, 
the lifespan was what, half the age of what it is today? So to figure that out is beyond impressive and it's a mystery. But to wrap this up, let's not forget, they knew about time, the calendar, they created all these amazing things. They knew about the flood six or 7,000 years after the fact. They even knew, and by the way, when going back to that religion uh, comment that I made at the beginning of this video, the story of Moses from the Bible is identical, literally identical to King Sargon of Akkad from 4,000 years ago, right out of the same region. So without a doubt, I think there's a religious factor in preventing people from learning about this information. I mean, isn't that fascinating? The story of creation, the flood, Moses, and a few other things come right out of ancient Sumer and nobody knows about it. They only teach us one to three sentences in school and they don't really teach that. I mean, I didn't know about the Sumerians until watching documentaries later on in life. So we have to start asking ourselves, why are these tablets being ignored? And just to paint you a picture, out of these tens of thousands of tablets, most of which are not on display and they're literally gathering dust in the basements of various museums throughout the world. And to make it even worse, most of these tablets were only interpreted once by one person more than 100 years ago. So these things need to be revisited. People need to look at them. And the discussion needs to open up that clearly they knew about things they weren't supposed to know about. Planets rotating around the sun without, I mean, 5,000 years before a telescope. Guys, look at this stuff. Think for yourself. I'll wrap it up here. I'm Jimmy. This is Bright Insight. Like and subscribe and leave me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I have many other videos to come and a whole wide variety of topics.